How's it going everybody? Welcome to Nicolette Reads. I'm Nicolette. I read. So today we are simply going to be doing book unboxings and by simply I mean we're going to be opening five book boxes. <laughs> I am subscribed to Alcrate, Alumacrate, and Fairy Loot. I skipped like a few months of Bookish Box, so those will come in future videos, but not today. Not today, Satan. Not today. Let's just go for it. So the first thing I'm going to open is the Alcrate Adult Book Only Box, and they send you just a custom new book instead of the book plus bookish goodies like what they do for their young adult books. Full disclosure, I already did open this one because I was deeply curious about a, what it looked like, and B, I kind of wanted to read it the other week, and I ended up reading a different one instead, so it's still in here. So on top we have I will create Forever is a Curse August Adult Fantasy card, and then we have the book itself. So this month's book is Masters of Death by Olive Blake, and here it is. So cool. I'm so happy that they went with this, like, um black and kind of craft papery brown theme instead of the original cover because I despise seafoam green and it really was not vibing with me at all. I did not want to put that book on my shelf. So I'm so glad they went with a color change in addition to an entirely redesigned cover on front here because I think it's such a vibe. The only thing I really know about this book is that there's vampires and a haunted house that's it, that's all I know about this book. Here's our front, and it says, forever is a gift and a curse. And then spine and back. For edges, we've got a solid sprayed black. And now let's take this off. Ooh, on the reverse dust jacket, we actually have an alternate dust jacket here with some character art on it. And then our naked book has got this really nice foiling with a bunch of scythes and cats. There's apples, there's juice boxes. I mean, I'm sure they all have relevance of some sort to the book, but I have no idea yet what those things might be. So, and then on the back, we've got more of it. And it says, the mortal thinks he has cheated death. Death thinks he has cheated the mortal. Both are wrong and neither knows it yet. Oh yeah, I think this book is told from the perspective of death. Okay, and then our inside end papers, we have some more character art, and then the same thing on the back here. I suppose we can read what Masters of Death is actually about, huh? Okay. You ready? It says, Viola Merrick is a struggling real estate agent and a vampire, but her biggest problem currently is that the house she needs to sell is haunted. So I pretty much nailed it, I think, is what we can glean from that. The ghost haunting the house has been murdered, and until he can solve the mystery of how he died, he refuses to move on. Fox Demora is a medium, and though he is also most definitely a shameless fraud, he isn't entirely without his uses seeing as he's actually the godson of death. When Viola seeks out Fox to help her with the ghost-infested mansion, he becomes inextricably involved in a quest that neither he nor Vi expects or wants. But with the help of an unruly and sharp-voiced angel, a love-stricken reaper, and a few mindfulness-practicing creatures, Vi and Fox soon discover that the difference between a mysterious lost love and an annoying dead body isn't nearly as distinct as they thought. What a cast of characters! What a recipe for disaster! <laughs> I think this book sounds like it's gonna be really fun. I read one for my enemy recently and I plan to read the actual Tor published version of Alice 6 sometime soon, probably before the third one comes out. So, I mean, we're on a roll with all of you, Blake. Might as well keep it going. I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna play into fall spooky season, probably like an October book that would be fun. Or if I run out of things for my TBR this month, I can give that a go as well. My only complaint with this book book is that when they were spraying the edges they got like really stuck together so like do you see what I'm saying so I don't know it has to just it has to be something to do with the way they sprayed the edges or the paper they used or something like that but I find that that's gonna be a little distracting when I'm reading and probably a little frustrating and also I'm scared that I'm gonna harm it in some way shape or form but 
that's really the only complaint I have about this copy. So I really like the customizations that they did for it, especially following last month's, which was the first adult that Alcrate has ever done, um, Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong, but that one didn't have as many customizations, like end papers, etc., that um, I was hoping for. So I'm glad that we actually have a lot of customizations plus a sprayed edge in this one. I just wish the papers were a little bit more separate. And of course, inside there are the illustrations um, in addition to the end papers, because all of E. Blake's books always have end papers and illustrations because she teams up with an illustrator, Little Kimura? She works with her on all of her books, works with that artist on all of her books. So of course they were going to be included in this one too. So that was probably helpful for Owl Create to have uh, an author who already works with an illustrator to do end papers and illustrations and things like that. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. Okay, next up we're going to do Owl Create's Young Adult box. So this is the box that will include a young adult, new fantasy, possibly sci-fi release, in addition to some bookish goodies as well. Okay, so this month's theme is Through the Seasons. First thing on top, this lilac box. It says I will create, oh, what is happening? Okay, so it's like a tin, a uh, hollow tin that is hexagonal and it's got some really pretty artwork on the outside. So let's see what it says, and then on the top, it's like got mountains. It looks like Valaris, but I think like any night mountain situation with three stars is always gonna look like Valaris to me. But I think it makes sense. Are these all the different courts? It's giving Akatar. I assume it's Akatar. Yeah, it's a tin of varied use. What is this? What is this? Why is there a bag? Why is there a twist tie? What do you put in here? I, I was gonna just say tea. I was thinking you could put tea in here. But what the heck is the bag for? I don't know, let's find out. The card says, our next item is sure to bring you closer to the land of the fairy. Our Akatar inspired tin is beautifully designed by Istomin underscore Dennis and features art depicting each of the seven courts in the series. Okay, so I freaking nailed it, first of all. But second of all, it does not explain why it came with a bag and a twist tie. If you guys know, what the purpose is, like cookies? Do you put cookies in here? Like maybe you home make some cookies and then you put them in this, but that's such a bizarre inclusion in my opinion. I would keep tea in here. It's like not air air tight, but it's like pretty close. Like the lid stays on, it's not air tight. I like it, I like it a lot. It's, uh, it's really light obviously because it's made of tin and it's really pretty and I love good Akatar inspired anything. So let's just go ahead and set it there. It's up with its fellows. Okay, great. The next item in here is a little, I don't know what it is. It's from Fiction Bath Co. It says Bergamont and Autumn Woods. Oh, solid perfume. Vegan solid perfume. Oh, it smells good. You know what it smells like? It smells like boy in like a really good way. Wow. <laughs> that smells really good. I mean, it's not just for boys. It just reminds me of the way that boys smell. Delightful. I love it. And it says Rook. Fiction Bath Co. brings the autumn season to life with this solid perfume inspired by Enchantment of Ravens. It is vegan and holds scents of bergamot and autumn woods. Wear this before a walk through the fall forest or on a cozy day of reading. The next item, it, oh cute. It looks like this. This is what you must remember. The ending of one story is just the beginning of another. And then on the back it says winter, spring, summer, fall, death is the fifth and master of all. So if you undo the little clasp, oh. It's annotating tabs for annotating. Poison, the poison for Cusco. Well, for how cute is that? Can you just... Okay, I am not a tab girly. I do annotate my books, but not with tabs. So maybe this could be a really nice foray into giving it a go. I'm willing to give it a try. But I like to color code my books, so I'll have to read the right book in order to pair it up with these colors for using tabs, but 
I think it's a great idea, especially since so many people have been annotating books lately, especially using tabs. I think that's a great item. The little thing that it comes in is a really cute idea. It, it could be a little bit more well constructed. That would have been fine with me, um, but I'm not mad about it. Only a little mad about it. I like it. Okay, it says, for the dedicated annotator, this item is sure to elevate your reading experience. Our annotation kit allows for annotating your favorite quotes without having to highlight in the book. Oh, so you can like, oh, that's why they're so long and skinny. So you can just put them right over the top. I get it. Inspired by the fifth season, this item was designed by Riddle and Ravens and Teresa Chen. Okay, so you can take the little, that's why it's so long. So you just put that down, pop, 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 pop. And it's like you're highlighting or just use it like a regular tab. I don't know, live your dreams. The next item, ooh, is the next story doorway. How freaking cute. Okay, I can't wait. It says Narnia, but I don't know if that's just, if that's what this is gonna be. Makes sense though, wouldn't it? Do I even have my Narnia books here? I feel like they're at my mom's house. It says courage, dear heart. And it has Aslan on top. It has the street lamp that she sees, that the kids see when they go through. Very cute. Love it, the wardrobe door. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, and then if I was me, I've never assembled one of these before, but if I had to guess, it's in. I tried really hard and I got it in. Haha, <laughs> that's what someone said. Okay, so cute. Yeah, I don't even think my Narnia books are here. Maybe I can get like a cute version. I love the doorways. I think it's a really fun idea. I'm really sad I missed out on the Hobbit door, but I'm excited to see where they keep going because, I mean, I never, th you don't think about it, but crossing that threshold is very fantastical. It says, for those who constantly cross over the threshold into fictional worlds, we've created a collection of stunning wooden doorways inspired by stories you love to lose yourself in. Display them on your bookcases in front of spines or book stacks, or use them as a bookend for shelves that you've not managed to fill with books yet. A bookend is a really good idea. We're entering through the wardrobe and embarking on an adventure to the magical land of Narnia. The Chronicles of Narnia Story Door is designed by Ice Wreath. Cool. I love it. I think that's really, really cute. Really off to a good start so far. Okay, let's do the pin next. So it's our next treasured tomes pin number eight of 12. Oh, and it's inspired by Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which I have not read yet, but I really intend to read soon. So here's what the front looks like. It says Encyclopedia of Fairies. And then inside, mm, this is a sturdier hinge than the others. We have a little picture of a fairy circle, some lavender. It's like her little notes she takes when she studies the fairies. Great, I love it. Uh, everyone has said really good things about Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies and the sequel comes out soon. The second one comes out in January. I will definitely be reading that book sometime before January, and I think this is a cute little very on the nose pin to go with the collection, so I'm digging it. Okay, next up I think is just the book. I think that's the only thing that's left. So here is our book. It is Omen of Ice by Juice Accardo. It says, when a fae falls in love, it's forever. It looks very winter. I feel like they could have probably done this in December with more success, but I suppose this book probably comes out soon so they couldn't just wait around for that. The back says, our lives cannot stop. They will all be watching us. Definitely, ooh, wow. Those edges are just like a beautiful periwinkle. I'm not usually a fan of periwinkle, but that's really rather pretty. Ooh, wow. <laughs> uh, oh. Whoa, there's a lot going on, guys. Okay, so here's the end pages. We've got this big white wolf and this girl. Holy cow! <laughs> Have I never looked at a book before in my life? So, for, okay. Let's talk end pages. Here are the end pages. There's a big white wolf and then this chick in the snow, right? And then, what's over here? <gasps> oh my god. Look at her, she got pink hair and she's tan and he's obviously fae. She's got some sort of mark on her forehead and they be kissing. What is happening? Okay, and then look at the naked book. It's like foiled character art that actually looks really pretty. I assume of the same two people. Wow. Okay, then there's our spine and there's the back. 
Okay, I don't even know what this book is about, but I'm already really excited and I feel like I want to read it soon, even though it gives off really strong winter vibes and we just hit fall. Okay, and then we've got reverse dust jacket art that's giving beauty, it's really beautiful, and it's giving In the Lives of Puppets vibes. Gorgeous, what is happening? Why is this so pretty? This whole, all of these book customizations are so pretty. Let's figure out what it's about, eh? Keltania Toon has spent her whole life training to become a bodyguard for a winter fae. It is the highest of honors for a druid. Only when Tania arrives at the winter court for the first time, nothing is what she expected. Her assignment is the heir to the throne, Valen, and he doesn't want her protection. In fact, he wants her gone yesterday, but Tania will not compromise even if he is the most arrogant jackass she's ever met. Because something isn't right in the winter court. Everyone has secrets, from the winter lord to the kitchen maids to the rising faction that wants the prince dead. No one is who they seem. And now it's up to Tanya to keep her sacred oath and protect Valen, even when his smart mouth makes her skate the razor-thin edge between love and hate. But the more she gets to know him, the more she realizes his secret is the biggest of all and might just get them both killed. I mean... So it's like bodyguard, but she's the bodyguard and he's like, fuck off, I don't need a bodyguard. Or he doesn't want her specifically, I don't know. Bodyguard trope, forced proximity, frenemies to lovers. What a good time to be alive. However, definitely gonna wait until it's winter to read this, at least until it snows once. So post Thanksgiving, probably. I mean, it's beautiful and it's gonna look really, really nice on the shelf until it's it's time. We also have this little magazine they give you. So it shows you the difference between the cover that they did and the original cover, but I'll put it up here so you don't have to look at me holding a piece of paper. But really impressed with this box from Owlcrate. Impressed with their adult customizations for the adult book only, but also really love this box and all the items within it I find are gonna be really cute and practical. Love it, cute, fun, let's move on. Okay, next up we're gonna do Illumicrate. So here is the Illumicrate box. I got the actual pretty box instead of just the yellow, plain yellow ones that I usually get off to a great start. Give me that pretty box. All right. So here we go, right off the top, we have this month's theme, it's Hidden Magic. How much fun is that? And I get, I bet you can guess based on just the art that they used for the spoiler sheet, um, what the book is going to be if you're familiar with the covers of books that have been coming out recently. Okay, I'm just gonna go for what's on top and what's on top is a lot of bookmarks. <laughs> you, you guys. They're the Mortal Instruments bookmarks from the original Mortal Instruments, like the, the OG, the first three. <laughs> I love them. Okay, let's run through it. If you know, you know. Mortal Instruments, Cassandra Claire, here we go. Here's Clary. Up next, our homeboy Jace. Isabel. Here's Simon. What a cutie patootie. Magnus. And then we have our boy Alec. Oh my god! They really said, here, have, count them, six bookmarks of fabulous, very identifiable fan art for the Mortal Instruments. I love them. I love them. Really good job, Illumicrate. Like, I'm a stan. Eep. There they are. Oh, that was an overwhelming way to start. Six? Hello, welcome to Nicolette Lost Footage. I'm Nicolette, I lost footage. So there are three items from the Illumicrate thing that I did not contain the footage for. The first is this beautiful Priory of the Orange Tree mug featuring this dragon and these people. Unfortunately, my mug has a little chip in it. He came that way, but I think it just gives some character. Nothing I'm too worried about. I'm getting into drinking tea lately, so fun. The next thing is a hollow book situation, a tin item. It's called the Book of Eyes. It's apparently from uh, Sorcery of Thorns and it's really cute and then it's hollow with a magnet and that's what the inside looks like. Very nice, very good um, Halloween decoration honestly. I've been putting it up. I'll show you guys in a second. Um, I'm really liking that. And then finally the last thing where we lost the footage there for a minute is some washi tape. 
Now these are all inspired by House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I haven't read that one yet, but I love TJ Klune, so I'm excited to do that. Washi tape, if you're not familiar, is printed tape that people use for journaling, scrapbooking, or bullet journals, etc. So I just bought one. So if I ever use it and put it on one of those pages, I'll show you guys. But okay, now let me put this back where I had it and show you where what I've been doing with it. Okay, so I have this shelf. It's on the bookshelf that my boyfriend has. He has this many books. Good for him. But I've had this up here with these other two hollow books. And that's the vibe. Oh. Hi. Okay, bye. Okay, and then the last thing in here is the book itself. Wow. Okay, so it's Zara by S.J. Jones, Guardians of the Dawn. I think that's so pretty. I think it's pretty close to what the actual normal cover looks like, honestly, but I'll put it here just in case. And then here's our side and our back. And it says, magic flickers, love flames, chaos reigns. And then the real kicker are these edges. I mean, come on. It's so pretty. And I think it goes with the book really well, the cover, I mean. And then our end pages are sort of like a take on traditional marbled end pages, but with more of the flower theme. Same on this side. And then, holy calzone, the naked book almost looks like a manga. It says, the maiden who was loved by death. I mean, fans of manga are gonna love this, or graphic novels in general. Like, that's, that's so cool. Uh, the reverse doesn't have anything, but that naked book, that's amazing. Wow, that's a beautiful, beautiful book. And, and we've got the signature as well. Awesome, really well done. All right, and this book has 494 pages. The font, it's a little dense, but the font isn't tiny, it's pretty big. I don't know, I'm excited about it. I think it's gorgeous. It's really, really cute. Um, so let's see what it is actually about. Magic is forbidden throughout the morning realms. Magicians are called abominations and blamed for the plague of monsters that raised the land 20 years earlier. Jin Zara already has enough to worry about, appeasing her stepmother's cruel whims, looking after her blind younger sister, and keeping her own magical gifts under control, without having to deal with rumors of monsters re-emerging in the marsh. But when a chance encounter with an easily flustered young man named Han brings her into contact with a secret magical resistance organization called the Guardians of Dawn, Zara realizes there may be more to these rumors than she thought. A mysterious plague is corrupting the magicians of Xanai, turning them into monsters. Only magicians are susceptible and Zara, Han, and their friends must find a way to defeat the plague before they or their loved ones are transformed. But as Zara and company get closer to the source of evil, they discover an even greater danger, one that threatens to throw the morning realms into darkness. To prevent the balance between order and chaos from being lost forever, Zara must find the elemental warrior within. What does it mean? I don't know, but I I think this is gonna be quite the little adventure, hopefully a little bit of romance, and overall a really good time, really beautifully customized or just even beautifully designed to, to begin with. I think that overall this whole box actually uh, has been fairly impressive. I'm really excited about the Priory of the Orange Tree Mug and the washi tape in particular. Um, I'm always a fan of getting these, but really, my favorite part of this box are the dumb little mortal instruments bookmarks. I think they're great. So I still think that the Owl Crate box probably won out a little bit, but I think that this is also a really, really strong box from a Luma Crate. And next month's a Luma Crate theme is going to be My Last Breath. And it's got this art on it, which is giving really strong A Study in Drowning by A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed vibes, if I had to guess. Next up we have Fairy Loot, their YA box. Um, which comes with 
book and goodies and we are going to start with July since uh, that's the one that was lost and then resent to me. Thank you again to Fairy Loot for providing another box after mine. Oh so sadly it was misplaced in the world or stolen by some very lucky person from my porch. Who knows? Not me. Okay so on top for the July box we have the spoiler card with some art. Okay, first thing on top is going to be some socks. And I know, I know people that um, you don't love getting socks in your book boxes because not everybody's feet can go with the socks. And you want to know another thing? Not everybody has feet. But guess what? I do and also the socks tend to be in my specific range. So they work for me. So I do really like getting socks in book boxes. Here it is, really cute, kind of thick, thicker than I expected, so actually kind of nice quality. And it says Crew Socks, designed by at Jez Hawk. Step into the world of Kay Ingram's The Wicker King with these stunning new socks. What's The Wicker King? I don't know, but I'm interested. Plus they look really cozy. <laughs> Okay, next up we have the Monster Family Crest Coaster set designed by Bluey Boo. So here's that box. Okay, so we have four coasters on top here. It's a mermaid or perhaps a siren, but she has a trident, so I'm going to go with mermaid. We have a two-headed dog, different than a three-headed dog, because it would be Cerberus, but it's not, because you're uh, missing a head there, pal. Here we have a cheeky little fox. He looks like he is up to no good. Swipe or no swiping, am I right? And then here we have a uh, phoenix. So that's very fun. The coasters say, these pastel coasters showcase the family crests from Vanessa Lenz' captivating novel, Only a Monster. So if I had read that, I could tell you more about it, but I haven't, so I can't. What I can say is these feel like pretty good quality as far as coasters go. They are cork on the back so and they're really pretty um I almost feel like you would want to display these instead of using them as coasters but they're also giving very like fall and spring cottage core vibes so nice okay the next item in here oh it's in a box it says collection of magical tomes volume 2 designed by at chatty nora and it's in this box here like that Honestly, the box that this box is coming in is already cute. So it says, The Book of Fate. And then here's the spine, and then an hourglass on the back. And then it has like the fake, you know, book edges. And then inside, a nice ex libris, and it looks like a hollowed out book. You know, between, between Illumicrate and fairy loot. I'm just floating in hollow books like uh, I gotta start keeping my secrets written down or something so I can put them in here and then I can be like woohoo don't look in my books some of them might be hollow but I think this is really really pretty and I think it's gonna look great on the shelf um same thing that you can keep in the other hollow book you can keep in here what a vibe. Also, this looks like it would be a really good just like Halloween decoration if you just set it out like tis the season, you know? So that's really cute. Uh, it says, discover the enchanting book of fate, the second volume in our secret book collection of magical tomes. Safeguard your fairy loot collectible tarot within its pages. So another vessel for keeping your tarot cards in if you so choose. Okay, up next it says cruel intentions magnetic bookmark. I'm personally not a fan of magnetic bookmarks because I don't know how to use them without it just being a ruckus, but these are so pretty. Look at these, they're swords. A hundred bad guys with swords. A hundred bad guys with swords. Or I guess this one's a battle ax, but these are gorgeous. See, I'm just not good at using magnetic bookmarks because you can't just do one page because then it's too heavy for the page. But if you do too many pages, then the magnets don't work anymore. So maybe I'll try using a magnetic bookmark once again, uh, just for the heck of it, just to say that I did, because these are really, really pretty. Um, I really like the design of all of these. I don't think they're inspired by anything in particular. Let's check. Nope, they're not, but they are designed by No One Designs, who we all love and adore. So very cute. Okay, so we have a pin in here designed by No One Designs as well. It's called the Nightmare Pin. What does it mean? I don't know. And it just says the Nightmare. 
Is it like a tarot card, maybe? It says, drawing inspiration from Rachel Gillig's One Dark Window, this enamel pin beautifully captures the nightmare, one of the Providence cards. I don't know what that means, but I do like this pin and it's giving strong fall vibes. So awesome. Neat. I like that. Okay, our tarot cards <laughs> are the Page of Stars and the Knight of Stars. I don't know who this girl is, but she's giving like Joan of Arc. And then this guy I like because he has a cat. And that's all you need from me to like you. So here they are again. It says the tarot card set features Nathaniel as the Page of Stars card and Elizabeth as the Knight of Stars card. The characters are from The Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson and were illustrated by the amazing at Rosalind Arts. So again, I still haven't, from the last time we talked about this 10 minutes ago, haven't read Sorcery of Thorns, but uh, if there's a little white cat and a lady knight, like, mm, say less, I'm in, let's go. The last thing is the book. It's in the pouch, which are always good for reusing if you need to travel and you don't want your book to get messed up in your bag with all its other stuff. We have our fairy scoop which is just like an, an interview with Kika Hatsapalo, who, oops, sorry, spoiler alert, is the author of the book. It's Threads That Bind. Here's the back. I feel like it's a color change from the original cover, or maybe it's not. No, it is. I think the original is um, greenish, green and yellow. And so we've got more going on here. And then check out that, wow. And then some nice starry sky going on up here. There's those edges again. And then we take off the, ooh, dust jacket. We've got a full reversible dust jacket option, which is giving more nighttime galaxy. And it includes the title and author on the spine, which they don't always do on reversible. However, the reverse side doesn't have any foiling, so bear that in mind, whereas the normal side, you know, has the foil. And then here's our naked book. We have some foiled character art. The back is empty. And then end papers, some art there. And then here's our main guy. Cute. So if you know, you know, I already have this book because Owl Crate did it. And so I've already read this book actually, enjoyed it. I think I gave it like a three and a half, three. Um, so it's pretty good. And the, let me tell you about it and then I'll show you against the Owl Crate version. Ayo is Moira born, descended from the fates. She can see threads, shimmering silver lines connecting every person. When a relationship is formed, a new thread appears. When a person's life thread is cut, it's their time to die. Ayo uses her gifts as a private investigator, trying to make ends meet in the world which treats other born people like her with suspicion and prejudice. Then Ayo is witness to a murder, but this is no ordinary murder. Ayo can see that the killer's life thread is severed. They should be long dead. More complicated still, there is another witness, Ede, a member of the violent Rossi mob who rule Alante. And what Ayo can see immediately, though, a day cannot is that there's a bright silver fate thread connecting them. This boy is her destiny. Ayo and a day are thrown together to solve the case, and as Ayo grapples with the dark secrets lurking beneath Alante's surface, she must decide whether to embrace her fate and give in to the feelings growing between herself and a day, or whether to cut the thread and set him free. So there's a little synopsis for you. It's really a really fun time. The magic in this book is very interesting in the world that Kika Hatsapalo has created is very intriguing and she does a good job with it. And the way that it ends means that there's going to be more. So uh, keep an eye out for sequels, including this, and then let me grab the other book really quick. So here's a comparison between the two. There's the fairy loot and then Owl Crates looks like this with the plastic dust jacket that comes off like so. And then Owl Crates also has this foil character art. I don't know why they're doing this because it doesn't look great. It's not very like crisp and clean, like the lines are too thick, both in this one and in the fairy loot one. But I mean, hey, it's their, their choice, their life. But yeah, I think both copies are really pretty. I'm glad to have both because they're both so distinctly different. 
Uh, if they were both kind of what Fairy Loot did, which is just a color change from the original cover, I wouldn't want to have both of them. But since I enjoyed the book and the covers are so different, I don't mind having both options. So overall, again, pretty good box. Here is some character art from our uh, book. And then it has the author letter on the back. So cute. And then next month's theme is Reap What You Sow. And guess what? We're gonna find out what's in it right now because here's the August box. <laughs> so let's get into it. Here is our spoiler card right on top. And the first item right on top it says Belladonna Tumbler, designed by Dree Dry Gomez. Hand wash only. Okay, whoa, we got a long straw. Glass? Oh, these are all the rage right now. Why is that? I actually have one but not like this. Wow. It says, you are mine and I am yours. And together this world is ours. Really pretty. I think this is great. Really nice quality. It does say hand wash only though, so make sure you are not putting this in your dishwasher. Strong start. Good tumbler. I love drinking vessels, eating wear. What do you call that? Whatever. Ooh. Next up, oh, oh, we have some bookends that are so freaking on the nose for spooky season. Look at them. What fun! Like, so they're inspired by Gideon the Ninth, you can tell because of the way they are. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. But they look very reminiscent of the covers of Gideon the Ninth, and then they have the the nine on the forehead, and they actually are inspired by Gideon the Ninth. Very cool. I love bookends. I love getting bookends. I love that it's a matching set. They didn't just give us one. And they're so cute. I feel like for spooky season, I'm just gonna set this like on something and then put a, like a candle back here, or maybe like a tea light candle, something. And then like, they'll flicker through the eye holes of the skulls. Someone tell me if that's a bad idea. I feel like it's a really good idea. I wish I had Gideon the Ninth so I could like bookend them together, but I don't. I don't have any of the Ninths, but I think these are really cool. Another strong item. Maybe this box is gonna redeem Fairy Loot from last, the one we just opened that I felt mid about. Ooh, sounds like metal on metal. <laughs> Okay, so this item are metal straws. They're really small, really thin, and they just have skulls and crossbones all over them, and they gave you four. Well, that's rather fun. You could have like people over for Halloween or whatever and serve them drinks in like a highball and just pop. It's the appropriate size for a smaller cup, and it's the, the width of the tunnel of the straw itself isn't very big, so it is perfectly cocktail sized. Or drink whatever you want out of it. It's your life. We're all just living in it. I think this is really cute. Loving the skulls, skulls and skulls. I mean, hey, they understood the assignment. And I was just talking about how I like getting kitchen items from book boxes. So how much fun is that? It says they're not designed by anything in particular, but they are designed by Blanca Design, so. Shout out Blanca Design, what a fun little trinket. The next thing in here is the book, but that can't be true. This says Bone Season Book Tabs, also designed by Blanca Design. Is this gonna be another annotating item? I hope so, because I'm trying to like try everything in the annotating world to see what I like. Oh my god, it is! Yay! Oh yay, David! Yay! The bone season, and then it says page tabs, get it? And it's spelled like the name page, and so I assume that somebody named Paige is in the bone season, which by the way just got re-released for its 10th anniversary edition, and apparently she edited it more this time, so it's like slightly different than its original version, and I would really like to get that. And this motif matches the cover for the new Bone Season that they just released. Anyway, we have some annotating tabs here that are inspired obviously by the Bone Season. And then we have the ruler, and then these guys go click into the side of like a notebook if you want, and then these just like sit there, or like a planner, or whatever you do, as long as it has a a spiral notebook. And then the ruler is obviously in centimeters, but I'm a plebeian that lives in America, so it's not inches, so it's meaningless to me. Just kidding, I'm sure it's helpful 
for something. But I do like the ruler edge because it makes lines really straight if you want to use it like that. And the tabs themselves are gorgeous and have a really cute design on them. So I love this item. Thank you for helping me up my annotating game, book boxes. Our last item other than the tarot cards is a sticker set that are so freaking cute and spooky. Awesome. So it kind of goes with the annotating because I feel like this is another item to use in like a journal. I feel like this month, Everything we've unboxed has been leaning a little bit towards, like especially the washi tape that we got earlier is a more of a journaling item. This is definitely more of a journaling item. This would obviously not lock into a book, it would lock into a journal. So I think they're kind of coming along with the trend of reading journals and reading planners and things like that. And I love that for us. Not everyone loves a sticker sheet. I love a sticker sheet. I think this is gonna go really well with that whole bullet journaling thing I was telling you guys about. So really cute, very on brand, very good for the season. Nice and spooky. Okay, and then let's look at our tarot cards. Oh, holy cow, she looks scary. Oh, oh, I think these people are from the book that this is. I think, we haven't gotten to the book yet, but if I know what I think I know, then I know, you know? Um, so here they are. It says we have Ren as the Queen of Stars and Julian as the King of Stars. The characters are from the Book of the Month, Bonesmith, by Nikki Pau Preto, and were illustrated by the amazing at Rosalind Arts. How much fun is that? I love, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I like when we have items inspired by the book that we're reading. So I think that's awesome. I feel like they, the tarot cards should always, unless they don't fit with the tarot cards, I guess, but then pick different cards, you know what I mean? Okay, so speaking of, let's get to the book. Okay, we have our fairy scoop. We have uh, some character art, an art card with the author letter on the inside, very nice. We have a bookmark version of this month's theme. And then, okay, look at this, you guys. Look, she's so shiny and the rest is this like nice matte. And like her, obviously she feels different as well. And then boom, gold spine, gold spine standard. And then here's the back. It says, ready your blade, defeat the undead. <laughs> it's so pretty, look at that. Some people don't like when they take just something from the cover and put it on the side. I actually really like it because I often will then display the side out because when it's on the shelf, you can't see the cool cover anyway. So you might as well see the uh, the cover art on the edges, but I also really just like the bold, like bam, it's gold of this spine. So we'll see how it gets displayed. And then on top, looks like this. That looks like possibly a skeleton, so maybe it goes like that. Well, look at that. That's the bottom. Wow. I mean, I think it's pretty much in theory what the original cover actually looks like, but um, it's probably a little different. And I don't know if the original cover has all this going on. It definitely doesn't have all this going on. So let's see what's happening inside. Ooh, there's a whole alternate. Ooh, <gasps> sorry. Okay, holy cow. These books always be making me gasp. I'd be out here gasping. We have a reversible dust jacket. So if you're not feeling the original cover, like homie, don't worry about it. You have a whole nother option. I'm in my green era right now. And this naked book is green. I love it. And like, look at the art that it is. She looks badass. She's got a skull on her shoulder and a castle to protect, I assume. Here's our spine. I'm all just, it's just a little bit off center, which is gonna bug me, but thankfully it'll have the dust jacket on when it's actually sitting on the shelf. And since it's green, I forgive them. But like when it's naked and green and then like, Wah! God, that's so fun. Here's some nice end paper art. Man, this is really well done. I'm digging this. And ooh, a different person for the back. Outstanding, amazing. What more could you ask for? They're giving us everything. I don't know about you guys, but my favorite page of any book is when you flip and it's just the title. I don't know why. It's like the feeling of starting a new book and you just see that it's like Bonesmith and you're like, fuck yeah. That is what I'm about to read. All right. It's a digital signature, but at this point, do we care? Yes, but I'll still take it. I understand why they do digital signatures. I just, 
appreciate regular signatures more, obviously. Why is the font so big? So like, this is a large, tall book. Like if, let's compare it to Zara. Like, this book be big, but why are the words so big? It's like, I feel like I'm reading a large print book, but I'm not, which whatever, but it'll probably make it really fast to get through and it's only 447 pages so I feel like it would take no time at all to read a page of this <laughs> since it's so big but I don't know what it's actually about. Let's find out. In the Dominions, the dead linger, violent and unpredictable, unless a bonesmith severs the ghost from its earthly remains. Oh. Okay. For Bonesmith Wren, becoming a Valkyr, a ghost fighting warrior, is a chance to solidify her place in the noble house of bone and impress her frequently absent father. R.I.P. Daddy issues. But when sabotage causes Ren to fail her qualifying trial, she is banished to the border wall. Oh, like in Game of Thrones. The last line of defense against a wasteland called the Breach where the vicious dead roam unchecked. Okay, so very like Game of Thrones. Can I help you? Determined to reclaim her family's respect, Ren gets her chance when a house of gold prince is kidnapped and taken beyond the wall. To prove she has what it takes to be a Valkyr, Ren vows to cross the breach and rescue the prince. But to do so, she's forced into an uneasy alliance with one of the kidnappers, a fierce ironsmith called Julian from the exiled House of Iron, the very people who caused the breach in the first place, and the House of Bones' sworn enemy. Uh-oh. Enemies to lovers? May chance, perchance, mayhaps. As they travel, Ren and Julian spend as much time fighting each other as they do the undead, but when they discover there's more behind the kidnapping than either of them knew, they'll need to work together to combat the real danger. A dark alliance that is brewing between the living and the undead. Oh, okay, here we are. Gideon the Ninth meets the Game of Thrones White Walkers in this dark young adult fantasy about a disgraced ghost fighting warrior who must journey into a haunted wasteland to rescue a kidnapped prince. Okay! I mean, I love that it's just like, listen, it's these two things, if you smash them together, which is basically what we're getting uh, in the fantasy genre a lot recently. It's like, if you took the Hunger Games and you put it with blah blah, Everything is something, okay? Everything is inspired by something else, and as long as you make the story unique in your own, I think that that's totally fine. So, Heathcliff, please. I have a wife and children at home. I don't. Thank you. So, honestly, I think it sounds like a really good time, and I think the copy itself is really gorgeous, and so I'm kind of excited to read it. I'm a little bit flying through the TBR that I had planned for myself this month. You can check that video out if you would like to. So I'm probably gonna have extra time. Maybe a undead, ghost-fighting, kidnapped prince in the zombie White Walker land story is just what I need. We've certainly got enough skull items in this box to support it. So I think that sounds really fun. That was the last box I had to unbox here. Let's check out our haul. That's not too shabby, is it? That's a pretty good book haul for one month plus the missing guy. I mean, and then our edges. I mean, that's what we live for. This is the dream, right? To just have a bunch of beautiful editions of books that are new releases, that are fantasy. I mean, come on. What else is there in life? Chocolate, cats, and wine. And that's it. That's the recipe to success in life, if you ask me. So that's it, you guys. Let me know which customization do you think was the best out of here, which one sounds the best, and let me know which item you think was your favorite. If I had to guess, and I guess it's not guessing because it's kind of me asking myself what I think. I really like the glass tumbler. I'm not gonna lie to you. But I also very much like the Narnia doorway as well as the washi tape and the other annotating things. Actually, you know what? There are so many things that I enjoyed from these boxes. I'm not even gonna get into it. So thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Like if you liked it, uh, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you guys the next time. Bye. The sun has arrived. What should I do about that?